Alright guys, welcome back to Steve-O's Fishing. Today, we're going to talk about finesse jigs. First, I want to get a little bit of a background with the jig with me. The first jig I ever owned uh, was this red and black jig that came, I think, in this little tackle box that I bought. Um, it was one of the like uh, pre-rigged jigs and it was already it was weedless, I think. And uh, I threw it out a couple times, um, didn't have much success, but then I actually did, I think, get a bite, um, but I wasn't sure because I was only like 16, 17, and I had no clue what this damn thing was, so I stopped using it. It didn't touch it for probably a good 13, 14 years. Then I picked it up again, and I was like, okay, I really want to get good at this. I think I had like four jigs, maybe some light brown ones, and you know, a couple black and blue ones. So I researched it, I researched what a bite felt like, I went through all the steps of um, what to do properly in order to catch jig fish. So I went out, I think it was like early May, and um, I had a nice little light brown jig tied on with a, uh, I think it was a Zoom Super Chunk trailer, and I threw it out first cast. I had it set up on braid. I heard that when you cast it out and the bass would bite on it, it would have like a little tick or a thud feeling. Um, so I, as soon as I cast it out, I felt the thud and I was like, this can't be, you know, a bite. I was like, this is ridiculous. I was like, I obviously, that's probably just it hitting it full, hitting the ground or hitting the uh, bottom of the pond or whatever. Um, but I was like, I'm going to err on the side of caution, so I set the hook and it was like a 17 inch bass. Very first cast. Fast forward four years, hadn't caught another fish on the jig since. And uh, so I wanted to get better at it, I wanted to expand my fishing knowledge, so I went and I did some more research and I told myself in order to get better at it, I gotta take it out every trip. So that's what I did. So last year, if you guys watched any of those videos, I took a jig out every trip and I made sure I fished it at least a little bit every every trip. Just to get comfortable with what it felt like when I was going over either rocks or going through grass or getting a bite, which I did end up actually catching some fish on the jig. And now I'm addicted. Um, it's probably my favorite <laughs> thing and way of fishing and, and tackle to buy right now. Um, that and trailers and just combining different trailer types with different jigs just to see the best um, combinations for uh, what the type of forage that we have around here. A lot of it's going to be crayfish and sunfish related, but I like them. So what I did was I put together 10 jig finesse jig combinations for this year's pre-spawn. I just did a pre-spawn box. I'm going to go through what my box looks like. Then I'm also going to go through the jigs that I put together and then some of my inspiration for how I paired the jigs. First of all, I was going to talk about the size jigs that I use for the finesse presentation. Um, this is going to go pretty much most of pre-spawn. You can also use them in the summertime. Uh, mostly when I plan on using them in the summertime would be after like a cold front where the bats are a little lethargic they're not going to be looking for as big of a meal or in high pressure situations so if there's a body of water or a part of the water that is being uh, fished quite heavily that time of year I would probably maybe go to a finesse jig then um, maybe with a little different trailer that I'm going to show you today just to uh, give them a little something more compact, they might be a little more finicky. But today is just going to be talking about the pre-spawn jigs and trailers and the different color combinations that I came up with. The size of the jigs and the pre-spawn that I'm going to be using are going to range from a quarter ounce to three-eighths ounce, mainly quarter ounce, five-sixteenths, and three-eighths are the main sizes that I like to use there. And the quarter ounce, I like to use the lighter ones when there's a lot of vegetation. 
they seem to come through that vegetation a little easier and don't get caught up as, as much on the muck and stuff that's on the bottom. So I'll go with the lighter jig at those times, but if there's not a lot of um, grass and weeds out there growing yet in the pre-spawn period, then I'm going to go probably either 3 8 or 5 16 pounds so I can get a little more distance. And as far as retrieves for these jigs, um, there's a couple different types and I, I usually base my retrieve on the types of uh, cover that there are, so whether it's wood or gravel or um, weeds that they're, they're mainly focusing around only because to drag a, a jig through weeds just makes no sense. So usually I do more of a hopping retrieve so I can get it and then pop it through the weeds if I get stuck on a little something so I don't ruin my cast every time every time you get caught on a little weed. I usually drag more around where it's just a, a flat gravel bottom or a flat bottom where there's no uh, um, not a lot of stuff to get hung up on. So wood, grass, I like to do a little hop-hop retrieve. Um, sometimes I'll even bring it all the way up and let it flutter down, uh, depending on the type of forage too, because uh, they can mimic sunfish as well as crayfish. I'm a believer, a lot of people like to trim the skirts on their jigs when they're putting trailers on. I like to trim the trailer, not the skirt, to make it fit that jig, because trailers are a lot less uh, expensive than the jigs are, and I feel once you cut or trim that jig, if you wanted to use it for a different presentation, you wouldn't be able to. So um, I am a fan of cutting the trailer versus cutting the jig. I think inspiration for looking at and designing these jigs. Um, we have, I found this crayfish of Pennsylvania, a little chart they did with the different types of crayfish that are in there. So what I tried to do was find some jig colors that mimicked those crayfish. We'll see how well I did. And then we have the sunfish. These are in Pennsylvania. So normally, like I said, the jig is going to mimic either a crayfish that is on the bottom or a sunfish either heating or possibly dying towards the bottom. I did want to go and take a look at my jig box and for that we're going to switch views a little bit. So here is the finesse jig box with trailers that I put together um, last night. Pretty much on the left side here these are going to be your jigs and I kind of tried to do them by water clarity color so I have the clear water then a little stained water in here and then the darker water up here. Um, so you know, you'll have your black and blues and then your more natural colors as you go down the water column. Then I have a different types of trailers set up here. Before I used to hold finesse jigs and then I had the trailers in a separate tackle box. But what this allows me to do is to take one tackle box versus two because I can only fit four in my backpack. So I can have different types of baits that I can take, take up to possibly four rods with me while I go. Um, but this allows me to get jigs and trailers in one box. Next, we're gonna go into the 10 jigs that I prepared for pre-spawn. I think they look pretty good. I was pretty excited about it. I spent about an hour and a half last night going through all the trailers I had, preparing the jigs that I had, and trying to find some good combos. So the first jig I got, is this light yellow, almost pretty light brown jig. It's a quarter ounce and I put a Big Bites craw chunk trailer on there. But as you can see, it has a nice little action to it. Not too much for the pre-spawn. Like I said, we want to make sure we don't have as big of a profile. That's the first one. Then we have another green little all-natural color and this I paired with a I believe it's a California Craw um, Ned um, Ned Craw trailer. 
So that's going to be the profile. Next is a another 3 8 ounce. This one I paired with a Smalley Beaver. Once again, we want to break apart the appendages. But here is that color. Then I got a little brown and red jig. Hints of orange in there. And I paired that up with another craw from uh, the Ned Craws. This one's a fire craw color, so the back of it is a bright red and the front is a little darker. But pairing that with that jig, I think this one's going to be killer. I'm excited to use it. Green jig. Um, it's got purple back. Looks a little blue on camera, but it is purple. Um, and I paired that with a net pack of chunk. So it gives a little bigger profile, um, but still not super floppy. So it doesn't displace a lot of water and scare away the bass during this time of year. Then we have this one. Um, this is a new jig I got in one of the unboxings I just did. Um, and I paired it up with a, another Smalley Beaver. The Beaver bait itself pretty much matches the the jig skirt. It's got a little bluish hint through it and the green pumpkin and then these little flakes of orange. So I'm excited to throw this one out there. Um, probably in a little murkier water because it doesn't look completely natural but um, I still think it looks pretty good. Then we got one more lighter water colored jigs. This has got brown, green, orange, a bunch of different types in there. And I paired it up with one of those Finesse Pro trailers. So they have the claws, but the claws aren't like a rage tail where it's gonna displace a crap load of water. Um, that way you can get um, the nice presentation. Still looks like a crawfish or the sunfish you know that we're looking for it's got those orange tips there and we have an old black and blue jig a staple especially when you're in the darker water because it it has that nice profile again that's a net pack of chunk black and blue along with the black and blue i believe it's a war eagle heavy finesse jig and some other combinations we have this a little darker this will bring uh so for the mercury water a little hints of chartreuse in there. Um, once again, I paired it with a Finesse Pro. Um, this one has actually purple claws and a green body, but I think that whole combination there looks pretty decent. It's a little psychedelic, but I think it'll um, have a chance to get the job done, but we're going to throw it. We're going to see what ones worked of these and which ones didn't. This is just a straight black jig, but I put a green pumpkin trailer on it. For some reason, the black and the green pumpkin trailer tend to be a pretty good combination. I don't know if it's the dark profile with the light appendages that gets these fish. This is just a, uh, a beaver style bait once again. The appendages broke apart. So those are the 10 jigs. Do you have any questions on what jigs they were or what trailers? Um, I tried to note which um, ones they were as I was going through them. Um, but if you do have any other questions or if you want to also comment below on what your favorite jig combinations are for the pre-spawn, that'd be great. Let's talk some fishing. Thank you for watching Steve-O's Fishing, and we'll see you next time.